just be a minute while we set the system back up. Good morning and welcome to our special service today as we celebrate the 90th anniversary of our present church building. And it's good to welcome Klaus, to, who's coming as our guest preacher today, who's here, and to welcome other friends as well. Um, after the service is finished, you may, we'll keep the church open for an hour or so to enable people to come and have a good look at the, the 90-year poppy display at the back, which is to sell 90 years that celebrate the 90 years of our church here, church building here, um, that Chris did. And also, you may wish to have another look at the marvellous um, poppy hanging, um, which Isabel brought and did last for last week. Um, and I'm sure that those of you who've um, seen the displays around the village um, the bollards that are, were covered for remembrance will um, be have, as much as I was impressed by them and they were a splendid um, effort um, from Kim and her mother and, um, and to the, the little latter ladies that did the poppies around the church grounds that were taken down on Friday um, they did a splendid work During the service, we'll hear greetings that people have sent us um, from different places, but as we gather to worship God today, first of all, um, let's join in the words that are on our call to worship. Um, which we say together. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for 90 years. Praise him forevermore. Indeed, we worship God and we glorify his name. Although we're not allowed to sing, we'll, um, and we'll hear um, Ina playing two of the verses of all people that on earth to dwell, but let's um, read the, f two, the first two um, together. All people that on earth do dwell, sing to the Lord with cheerful voice. Him serve worth mirth, his praise forth tell. Come ye before him and rejoice. Know that the Lord is God indeed. Without our aid he did us make. We are his flock, he doth us feed. And for his sheep he doth us take.
I've received various messages of goodwill, um, which I'll read three of them at this stage. The first one is from David Black, Reverend David Black. Um, message from him and Sandra. We're both well and keep on going the best we can in the circumstances of the pandemic. And then, I'm delighted to send my warmest greetings and my best wishes to Kinloch Leven Parish Church on the occasion of the 90th anniversary. It was my first charge and my seven years are full of wonderful memories and wonderful friends in the parish. I remember with fondness our time in the village and pray God's blessing, especially in these difficult, difficult days. Second is from Edgar. We are very glad, dear friends, he writes, that we were able to visit Kinnochleven Church in late May last year and see many of you again, especially in view of the pandemic, which is restricting our travels. It is good that restrictions have eased a bit so that we can gather in our churches for services of worship. Jean and I send our best wishes for the 90th anniversary celebrations, even though they will be seriously limited by present circumstances. The Golden Jubilee of Kinloch Leven Church was marked in our time, as some of you will remember, in very different circumstances when we held a week of celebrations. A week we will always remember since the culmination was the safe arrival of our third child, Heather, whose name is a reminder of the hills around the village. And thirdly, at this stage from Nether Lacaber congregation. In happier times, the 90th birthday of Kinloch Leven Parish Church would see the road round the loch very busy as the congregation of its sister church came to join in the celebrations, a service of thanksgiving and the customary hospitality afterwards. In view of the restrictions caused by COVID, this with great regret has not been possible. Nothing will prevent, however, the good wishes of Netherlock Haber congregation from being conveyed to you with all prayers for God's blessing in the days and years to come, summed up in this Celtic blessing. Deep peace of the valley winds to you. Deep peace of the snowy mountain to you. Deep peace of the quiet earth to you. Deep peace of the shining stars to you. Deep peace of the gentle flowers to you. All the stars always bringing light to you. Deep peace of Christ of Christ, the light of the world, to you, the deep peace of Christ. With these words, let's join together in prayer. Lord, we are the sheep of your pasture, and we will thank you forever, praising your greatness from generation to generation. We praise you, holy God, our gracious and wonderful God, our refuge, our keeper, our maker. We thank you, Lord, for nurturing us, for nurturing our past, for helping us in the present. And we trust you to help us in the future. We thank you for this church. We thank you and praise you for your covenant people, for years of prayer and praise in this building. We thank you for faithful believers, for those you have called to ministry here over the years, for those who in this place heard the call to serve elsewhere. We praise you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who saves us from darkness and sin oppression and evil, and continues to lead us into a new life. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us here, for the witness we've received, for the encouragement we've been given, for the fellowship we've been nurtured with, for the blessings of worshipping together. We need you, Lord, for so often, 
we fall short. We turn in on ourselves. We don't look to you. We don't trust you. We fall short of the standards of goodness and loveliness and beauty that you call us to. But you are a God of tender love and infinite mercy. Your love never fails us. We look to you, Lord. We look to you, Jesus, your Son of God and Son of Mary. We thank you that you have come to heal and to strengthen us. Lord, as we wait for your forgiving and renewing love, we open our hearts to your healing presence. We receive your peace. We thank you for the times in this congregation when you have moved powerfully by your Spirit. Come again, Lord, and give us times of refreshing again. We open our hearts and our minds to your Spirit so that we might experience more of what you desire for us. Come, Spirit of God, we are here. Bless us in this hour of worship that we may honour you and serve you and grow in faith. And this we ask for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Before we um, hear some more greetings from friends, we'll listen now for the scripture readings, and as you'll notice, with um, Maureen and Klaus are with us today, so Klaus is going to read the passages today. privilege and an honour to be with you this morning. Two Bible passages, quite short, I'm going to read. First of all, from Numbers chapter 15. Numbers 15, uh, verses 37 to 41. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, Throughout the generations to come, you are to make tassels on the corners of your garments with a blue cord on each tassel. You will have these tassels to look at, and so you will remember all the commands of the Lord, that you may obey them, and not prostitute yourselves by going after the lusts of your own hearts and eyes. Then you will remember to obey all my commands, and will be consecrated to your God. I am the Lord your God. Who brought you out of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord your God. And the second reading from Mark chapter 1 verses 16 to 20. Mark chapter 1 at verse 16. As Jesus walked beside the sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake. For they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. When he'd gone a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat preparing their nets. Without delay he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. Amen. And may God add his blessing to these readings from his holy word and to his name be the glory and the praise. During the week I had a message from Mary Savage um, who's 
before she was married was uh, um, Mackenzie. Her father was the session clerk here, and she speaks warmly of her years here and the happy memory she has of our congregation. And she was ho hoping to watch um, the service today. I also had a message from St. Paul's um, Episcopal Church from a very happy 90th birthday to Kinlochleven Parish Church, building in its congregation, from your sisters and brothers in Christ from St. Paul's and all the West Highland region of the Scottish Episcopal Church. May your long life of faithful witness and worship continue. Looking forward to your centenary and a telegram from the Queen. Um, with us in the congregation is Justin from the Faith Mission. Um, and I think you're going to come and give us your words. Well, hello, folks. It's good to be with you. And Malcolm said he was going to read a wee something. And here's a wee something. Uh, we know that many of you have been here since the church opened. A joke. <laughs> Not an over 90. But, sorry, I couldn't resist that. But we know that, you know, I know in my heart, and me and my wife know that you have done a great deal of church work, all of you. We know that some of you is really well. You've done church work, community work, youth work, children's work, and that you've been a blessing to many over the years. This church has been a great blessing to many over the years. And it's only heaven that will show the results of the years of effort that you've made, that this congregation's made, that the believers here have made. And we pray that this work will continue. On the behalf of the Faith Mission, we thank you for your support and prayers for us over the years, many years, many of you supported the faith mission and prayer and in other ways. And we want to also thank you for the amazing knitting. Yes, the knitting. Do you know that only last week my daughter was wearing a Kinloch leaving ladies knitted jumper? Proudly in Loch Yeah, seriously she was, she, she loves it. Especially when it's cold. I, I want to thank you for your superb soup that we won't sample today. And ha happy home bacon that we also won't sample today, sadly. But it's been a privilege to come here and take regular evening services. And also, we had a great time doing the summer club with you each year for a number of years. And we've had really warm times of fellowship with you. Because you are really warm folk. You know, and uh, does this being recorded and going in? Yes. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for 90 years, God has helped those believers, those that worship from here. And you know, the Lord is able to help us as we go on further, isn't he? And I just want to leave you with this verse. We've got all the hills surrounding us here. And it says, I lift, Psalm 121, verses 1 and 2, I lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. We've got help from him to go on further. So pray on and go on. And happy 90th anniversary. God bless you. Thank you, Justin. And we hope that you'll be back soon to when evening services resume and hope that next year can bring more opportunities um, for your work with young people. Let's read together two of the verses of the next hymn on the service sheet. We love the place, O God, and we'll hear, in, we'll listen as Ina plays. We love the place, O God, wherein thine honour dwells, the joy of thine abode, all earthly joy excels. We love the house of prayer, wherein thy servants meet, and thou, O Lord, art there, thy chosen flock to greet.
Well, again, it's a great honour to be asked to preach in this morning's Sabbath, your 90th anniversary. Among the memorabilia I kept with me when I left Kinnaleven was the, the original order of Sabbath from the 14th of November 1930. I've still got a copy of that. I wasn't here at the 50th anniversary. Edgar was here, but I do remember the 60th anniversary. Again, we've still got some of the memorabilia, the, the cups and the coasters that were produced at that time. And I look forward to coming back for your 100th. So bear that in mind. I'm not going to start with a text this morning, but a line from a film. I, one of my weaknesses is I, I like science fiction films. And one of the films I, I saw a wee while ago was called The Ghost in the Machine. It's about a, a woman, I think she was a woman, she had a woman's brain anyway, in, implanted in a robotic body. And her memory had been scrubbed, uh, but she had kind of dim dim memories. We weren't quite sure if they were real memories or not. And so the question was, was who was she? This is one of the things that science fiction films very often um, address. Big questions about who are we as human beings? When you compare ourselves with aliens or you compare ourselves with uh, robots and artificial intelligence, a thing which is becoming much more important in, in these days. Who, who am I? So this woman was asking herself, or this woman's brain in this robotic body was asking herself, who am I? And she was told this, we are not identified by our memories, but by what we do. Forget the memories. Forget where you came from. It's what you do. And you, the person said to her, you are a crime-fighting machine. She had this amazing robotic body that could do all kinds of stuff. And the rest of the film is about how she fights against some major criminal and, and all the rest of it. But at the same time, she's still thinking who am I really? And when I thought about that line, I thought about Kindle Leaven. Because it's wrong to say we are not identified by our memories, but by what we do. Our memories are the very thing that identifies us and makes us who we are. We do lots of different kinds of things. There are lorry drivers. There are accountants, there are nurses, there are ministers. That's what we do. But if we're only defined and identified by what we do, what happens when we retire? A lot of people actually struggle with that. Who am I now when I'm no longer a a lorry driver or or a nurse or an accountant or a minister? Who am I? But I'm still me. Each one of us is identified by our unique memories. The schools we, we went to, the places we grew up, um, yes, the jobs we did and the people we knew there, the places we went on holiday, all of that identifies each one of us uniquely. But that's true for each of us individually. It's also true for us as churches. You can't put a church in a box and say, that's the church. And that tells us everything there is to know about the church. It's in a box. It's not true. Every church is different. Every church is unique. And it's because of our memories, where we came from, our pasts. After I left Kinnerleven, I went to Wishaw, a church called Thornley Parish Church. It was united with a neighbouring congregation, no longer there. But when I went to Thornley Church, they had a very interesting history. They began, I think it was 18... I can't remember, was it 1826 or 1829 as a part of the Relief Presbytery? I had to look that one up. What did the Relief Presbytery do? In 1893, they became part of the UP, the United Presbyterian Church, then became UF, then they became Church of Scotland. And some of the practices that are still being practiced in that church when I went there in 1999 could only be explained and understood with reference to their history, to their long memory going back much further than Kindle even. But Kindle even too has got a unique memory, going back 90 years. And even before that, before there was a church here, you may, some of you will know the stories of the, the missionary who went up to the navvies who were building the dam. Hard working, hard drinking, hard living people preaching the gospel to them. And in the hut that was the place of worship before this church was built in 1930. 
Last Sunday was Remembrance Sunday, and I watched your service in, uh, in Mutho on live stream. And Malcolm was reminding you about the importance of memory and the importance of remembering. The Jews were told in Numbers to wear tassels in their garments with a blue thread in each tassel to remind them of God's commandments, to think about what God had said and how God wanted to be their God and they should be God's people. And so they were reminded of these commandments. God tells the, the Jews to tell their children about God's commandments and the great things God has done. About Abraham and how God called Abraham to be the father of a great people. And through him all the nations of the earth will be blessed. Tell your children about Moses and how he redeemed the, how he brought the people of, of Israel out of, of Egypt to be a great nation and brought them God's commands and laws. And that covenant relationship with God. I will be your God and you will be my people. That relationship which defined the Jews as God's people. And every time we have the Lord's Supper, Jesus reminds us to, to share that, that uh, bread and wine, remembering his body and blood shed for us. And the new covenant, the new relationship we can have with God through Jesus. Remember your own uh, journey of faith that brought you here today, this morning, in this place. And when I remember my journey of faith, Kindle of Leaven was an important part of that journey too. This too, like, like David Black said, this too was my first charge. And maybe the congregation here were expecting me to come and teach them, but I did a lot of learning in those 15 years when I was here in Kin of Leaven. If Mary is listening to this, her father Alistair Mackenzie was a session clerk here. I learned a lot from him. I remember him telling me about his journey of faith, how he'd been an elder here for many years. And then the, the church asked him to be the, the session clerk. And it was at that point he told me, he thought, well, I better take this Christianity stuff a bit more seriously than I have before. And, and all the church stuff. And that was when he really began to read the Bible and to pray more earnestly than he'd ever done before. And that led him on a journey of faith, which led him to do the reader's course, and he became a reader and a preacher. And quite often on a Sunday morning, he wouldn't be here in church because he'd be conducting services somewhere or other in the, the rest of the presbytery of Lochaber. Some of you remember Johnny Blair, who died just a few years ago in his 90s. A wonderful servant of God. One of the big shop managers in the factory. I, mean, I remember quite often after a quick session meeting or, or a coffee morning or something in the church hall, everyone else would be going away home and, and I would be wanting to go away home and he would be the one who would be sweeping the hall with the big brush. And I thought I was the big shop minister. But Jesus said it's the, the last who will be first. And those who think they're the first they're going to end up being the last. I think of Peachy and Dorothy. Again, some of you might remember them. And I'd only been here, I think, literally a few weeks when the church put on a cele special celebration for Peachy and Dorothy Blair, who had for 40 years been leading the Girls' Brigade. Long, faithful service. I think of the, the young missionary that you supported in India whose photograph was on the church notice board and who now is sitting in the congregation and became my wife Maureen Macaulay. I think of my three boys who were all born here in Kinderleven and for them this is home. Andrew, my eldest, wanted to be here this morning but Angus was put into tier three under the COVID regulations and literally just a few days ago had to cancel uh, coming here to be with you this morning. He may well be watching this on live stream. And it's great that the Faith Mission is here with us this morning because when my three boys were just we, and I think Andrew might only have been six, and I don't know what Jonathan and Stephen were, maybe three and four or something like that. They used to go to the Joy Hour run by the, the, the Faith Mission up in the Salvation Army Hall. And that was when they gave their lives to Jesus and asked Jesus into their hearts. 
Uh, and today, they're all very actively involved in their church with real faith. And that was due to Kinder Leaven. So these are some of my memories, and maybe stirred some of your memories if you've been around long enough. But the truth is, we can't live in the past. Memories do identify us, but what we do is also part of our identity. What we do is important. And what we do will be different now than what we did 90 years ago or 190 years ago. If you've ever read some of the older Scottish authors, J.M. Barry and The Little Minister and some of the other books he wrote about uh, social life in, in Scotland in those days, you know that Scotland has changed a lot. The church has changed a lot over these years. Jeremiah talked about looking for the ancient paths. Look for the good way, he says, and walk in it. Walk in it. He doesn't say stand in it, but walk in it. Travel that path. Move on to where that path leads you. And one day the path that we are travelling right now will be the ancient path for the next generation or the generations after that. Just as the generation that built this church 90 years ago are long gone, but their legacy lives on today as we still worship and witness in this building. Where is that path leading us? The coronavirus since March has been catapulting the church along that road in ways I, I'm sure we never really expected at all. I know I've often thought that the church should have a bigger digital presence in the internet and so on. I thought about it, never done anything about it until March, when all the churches were closed, and I suddenly thought, well, what am I going to do now? How are we going to worship? And that was when I discovered how to put services on to, to YouTube. And if all is going well, my church service from Muthel will be running on YouTube right now. Malcolm's service is here this morning. It is being live streamed. Maybe Mary's watching, maybe Andrew's watching. And it's that mind-boggling thing to think anybody in the world right now with an internet connection could be watching this service. And he's reaching far more people than are sitting here in the church right now. Jesus said, send, uh, pray that God would send labourers out into the harvest. This building isn't the harvest. This building is the barn. The harvest is out there. The harvest may well be glued to their phones, watching Facebook, WhatsApp, and all the other kinds of things that people do on their phones. That's maybe where the harvest is. The church has been catapulted along that road to engage with that harvest in a way that we've never had to do before. But let's be aware also that the internet version of reality is not true reality. It can be manipulated in lots of different ways. We still need people, real people, with real faith to enter into real relationships in order to share that faith with those who don't yet have it. It's never a case of either or. Yes, we need our memories. They're very important. But it's also what we do. Yes, we need a digital presence connecting with people through the internet but we still need to have real relationships with real people to share real faith. So let's find those ancient paths, those good ways, but keep walking in them because the future is beckoning. And God wants us to prepare the way for the future as well as remember the past. Let's pray. Father God, we give you thanks that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And as we give you thanks for the past, we ask for your guidance today, that we might lay the foundation for the ongoing work of your church for the future. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.
I invite you to turn to the, the next hymn on the, on the sheet. And again, we'll read together two verses and we'll hear, we'll listen, we'll think about the words as Ina plays. Great, great shepherd of thy people here, thy presence now display, as thou hast given a place for prayer, so give us hearts to pray. Within these holy walls, let holy peace and love and concord dwell. And here give the troubled conscience ease, the wounded spirit heal. In our prayers, there, there's a fr phrases that when you hear them, if you would repeat those phrases, the phrases being, Lord, we dedicate our lives to your service, and the phrase, Lord, hear our prayer. Because a service to celebrate an anniversary of a church is partly about looking b backwards, but partly it's about asking God's blessing for the present and the future, and this we shall do. Including, as we think of the words, we, may we in faith receive thy word, in faith present our prayers, and in the presence of our Lord, and bosom all our cares. Let's pray together. Almighty God, we give you praise and thanks for giving us and giving this village, this church, and we thank you for bringing us here. We thank you for the many people whose lives have been touched and guided by the worship of your house in this place for the times when your Holy Spirit has moved in people's hearts. We give you thanks and praise you for your mercy shown to us here and at other times. We thank you that today Klaus has been able to come and share with us. We pray for your continued blessings for him and Maureen in, in Klaus's ministry in Muthel, Muthel and in the surrounding areas. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness to us. When we, when we called on your name, you heard us. You made your presence known. When we prayed, you responded. When we heard your word and received the sacrament here in this church, you were in our midst and you strengthened us. And when we offered our songs and our worship, you accepted our praise. Continue to empower us with your Holy Spirit, Lord, that we might proclaim your gospel to the world and to people. Help us witness to the good news of Jesus in what we do and in what we say. We dedicate our lives to your service. We dedicate our lives to your service. Lord, show us how to give care and support to the needy and love and mercy to the broken and the forgotten. Lord, we dedicate our lives to your service. We dedicate our lives to your service. Show us new ways of loving one another. 
We dedicate our lives to your service. We dedicate our lives to your service. You call us to a life of worship, witness and work for the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. We dedicate our lives to your service. We dedicate our lives to your service. Lord, break down the prejudices and the barriers that separate us and make us, Lord, all one in Christ. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Renew us by the power of your Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Continue to comfort and heal and lift up the brokenhearted, and especially we pray for the, those who are grieving at this time. So we pray for the friends and the family of Charlie Duncan and for the family of Sally Dewar. Especially we pray for her three sons, Gordon, Mark and Robert. May they know your comfort, your strength and your guiding hand. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. And hear us, Lord, as we sum up our prayer in the words which so long ago Jesus taught to his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, I've not been able to acknowledge all the people who's been watching on, online, but I see Brian, Finlay and Elizabeth Taylor, Colin, Stella, Annette Campbell, Nora, Joe and Josie Stewart, Margaret Moulin, and Joyce as well. And there are others whose names aren't on my screen, um, but are, are, I'm sure are watching. And Marion as well is watching. Um, Printed out as one verse of what is really part of a children's hymn, but I think the words are very appropriate. Praise yet the Lord again, Alleluia, Amen. Life shall not end the strain, Alleluia, Amen. On heaven's blissful shore, his goodness will adore, singing forevermore, Alleluia, Amen. Let's think of these words, and Ina will play the hymn, play the verse. After the benediction, I'll take the camera and down to the um, to let people who are watching see, have another look at the ninety poppies display at the back of the church. But let's see. Wait for God's blessing in the words, the familiar words of the benediction. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you. And may the blessing of Almighty God 
the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you, remain with you, and with all whom you love, both now and for evermore. Amen. <laughs>